So I had a series last year when I had a big goal to like finish as many series as possible and to get to a really low amount of currently reading series. I had a series called, a video series, <laughs> called Series Wipeout, where I tried to finish loads of book series in that video. And I haven't bought it back this year because my series goal this year is just to get to a net negative. So just be currently reading one less series than I was at the start of the year. How's that going, Megan? Not great. So I figured it's time to bring back series wipeout, okay? <laughs> time. We need this. This is essential. This is a crisis. So what I thought we'd do this time is finish the highest rated series on my TBR. So what I did was I went to my own shelf on Goodreads. I sorted it by highest rating and I scrolled until I saw a book that was in a series. It didn't matter whether it was the third book in a series, the second book in a series, whatever. I scrolled until I found the highest rated book on my TBR that was in the series. And the idea was I was gonna finish that series. The only thing I excluded from the count was graphic novels, because A, that would mean this video would be really short, because graphic novels don't take long to read. And B, I find that graphic novels are rated higher. They're kind of, people are more generous, I feel like, with their graphic novel rating. So it had to be a novel. And guys, I wanted to guess what the book was, because I was actually really surprised. I was not expecting it to be this book. So my thinking going into this was that it was gonna be like a, a long series where maybe it's like the fourth book in a series because series as a rule, this doesn't always work because a, you know, last book in a series can suck, but usually as a series goes on, it gets a higher rating on Goodreads because by the time you're on like the fourth book in a series, the people reading that are the people who have enjoyed the previous books. So they're likely to like the writing style of the author. I thought it would be like the fourth book in the series, but it's actually the second book in a duology. And that is Rule of Wolves by Lee Bardugo. This is the sequel to King of Scars. Now technically, I guess this is a duology, but if you think about it, this is like the seventh book in the whole Grishaverse world. And the more you think about it, I guess it does make sense. Like <laughs> first I was like, what? <laughs> Excuse me? The more you think about it, it makes sense because if you're reading this book, you are likely to have read the, um, what are they called? Shadow Bone Trilogy and the Six of Crows duology. You may have only read like maybe one of them. Do you know what I mean? You may have just read Six of Crows and then got into this, but this does spoil both of those series. So I feel like actually the people who are reading this are the people who have read all the Grishaverse books before it and know that they like the Bodigo's writing style, like this world, what have you. Okay, so we're gonna be finishing off Rule of Wolves and finishing off this duology. How do I feel about this? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't love King of Scars. I think I gave it like a 3.5, I wanna say. We're following, now this is difficult because I don't wanna spoil anything from uh, the previous <laughs> two series. I'll try hard not to. We're following three characters. We're following Nina from Six of Crows and we're following Nikolai and Zoya from the, si Shadow the Bleh, from the Shadow and Bone trilogy. Nina is from Six of Crows, which if you know is like a group of friends on this heist or whatever, this is set after that duology. And Nina is a, uh, what is she? She's like one, I can't remember. She's like one of the Grishaverse powers. There's like different levels of magic. I don't remember, I don't remember love. I don't remember at all. <laughs> There's like all these different powers. I can never remember the names of them and which ones are which, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> I love the Six of Crows duology, but like Shadow and Bone isn't my favorite. And this feels a little bit more leaning Shadow and Bone because then you've got Nikolai and Zoya from that. What should we say? Nikolai the Prince? I don't think that's a spoiler. You don't meet him till the second book in the, in the series, sorry, but I don't think that's really a spoiler. Nikolai's a prince and Zoya is like a member of the army, I guess. Can we say that? <laughs> I don't know. I never know who's like just another character in the book actually and who's like a member of the army. Like I, I never, you know. We're all, if you're on the team in Grishaverse and Shadow and Bone, you're like in the army in my opinion, you know. So yeah, we're gonna be reading Rule of Wolves and I don't know how to feel about it, but I'm gonna try and enjoy it. I'm gonna keep this vlog non-spoilery for both Shadow and Bone and Six Crows and Crooked Kingdom. I would be talking more about how I feel about the book, the writing, etc. So I'm gonna read like maybe the first 100 pages and then check in with you. I think I'm probably gonna have to reread a recap of King of Scars as well, just to resituate myself as to where we are. But yeah, I'm nervous because this does feel, this duology feels more like the Shadow and Bone series, which I don't love as much, but I have heard good things about the ending of this and where it leaves the whole Grishaverse. So I'm excited for that. <laughs> I prefer really not to, um, not to speak. I am 100 pages into Rule of Wolves. And um, <laughs> I was reading this in the garden, right? Having a lovely time relaxing in the garden, but I was bored. 
And I was so bored that I decided that the best course of action was just to go to sleep instead. So I just slept for an hour outside in the garden because it was more interesting than reading this. <laughs> Here's the thing, right? I shouldn't be feeling that with a book that is essentially a seventh book in a series, right? Where I should be really attached to these characters and this world building. But there's something about this book that feels very similar to the Shadow and Bone trilogy where it just feels like, I don't think Grisha world stuff actually is something that interests me. And I've been reading it for a long time at this point. <laughs> Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom, I feel like are much more focused on the plot and focused on those characters rather than, like you could take it out of the Grisha world, really. Apart from some of them having powers, like you can take it out of that world. Whereas this is much more about like political machinations and like world building and like characters from the first trilogy who I just don't care about. You've been very, very harsh. Nice to meet you. Kelly. Kelly I'm not that interested. I don't want to DNF because I know that this book, I think, is going to have important things happen in it, particularly maybe towards the end. If you ever want to read a third Six of Crows, I believe this may set it up from whispers I've heard, which I do want to read a third Six of Crows. So like, dear God, I'm going to have to read all this book. But I'm not loving it. I'm not loving it. I just, I don't know if... Nina is the character from the Six Crows trilogy eh, that I want to follow more on her own or if this, I don't think this feels like the right, and I said this with King of Scars, I don't feel like this feels like the right way for her story to go. I feel like so much happens to her. I'm not going to spoil anything with Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom, especially, you know, towards the end of Crooked Kingdom, all the characters go through stuff, but Nina does in particular. And I just don't know if I vibe with like the direction her story and her character go in this book. That's all I'll say. If you've read them, maybe you get what I'm saying, but I just don't know if I enjoy that. And I love Nina as a character, but I'm not sure I love her as much outside of that group. The group in Six of Crows is such a strong group. They all bring great different stuff to the table and her out of that just feels wrong. It feels wrong. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. And I should care more. Like already big stuff is happening and I should care more, but I don't. I'm just gonna listen to the book and read this quickly because I can already tell I don't think I'm gonna love it. Who knows, maybe it'll turn around and I won't fall asleep in the next 100 pages. If I don't fall asleep, it's already a win. <laughs> Just some rest to need and escape from the world. Oh, and let's escape the world. Am I in the high? Are you bouncing up and down, far above ground? Am I in your core? My soul's twisting. Okay, I got to page 250 tonight, which isn't bad, you know? Like, that's not terrible. I'm, I'm proud of myself. Um, it, it, um, <laughs> I'm enjoying it a bit more now. A little bit more, not a lot more, but a little bit more. <laughs> I like the direction that it's going in, kind of. I've got a bit more interested in some of the storylines. I mean, here's the thing, right? This is always my problem with split storyline, split perspective where they're not following the same storyline books. Where like, we've got these two different storylines going on. One with Nicola and Zoya's perspectives and then one with Nina's perspective kind of on her own. And like, I don't like it as we know. <laughs> But that's not like a broken record, but I have discovered that's not something I love. But like, if it's from an author, that I enjoy a lot, like I do tend to, like Leah Baldigo, I've given her probably like a one and a half star, I've given her many five stars, you know? We we have a turbulent relationship, but it's one I can't quit. Like I'm gonna read all of her shit. I'm gonna read everything Leigh Bardugo puts out. She's one of those authors for me. So like, I'm, you know, <laughs> willing <laughs> to just experience it. Here's the thing, right? Also, I feel like when I'm excited for a book, so many books could have a split timeline in them and I just like wouldn't know from it that being pitched to me. Like so many books you don't know this. Like I can say, oh, I, I can avoid them. But unless someone says to me, oh, Megan, that book has a split timeline. 
I don't know to avoid it. Okay, but that's a separate issue. Like I was saying before I went on a tangent, I know my tangents are bad, guys. I just went on another tangent to talk about tangents and then another one. <laughs> like I was saying, when you have this split timeline, it takes me double the time to get invested in the storylines because we're spending half the time that we would in a normal story arc with each of the timelines. And I just don't like it. It's just not for me, you know? And it just always, nine times out of 10, 19 times out of 20, it hampers my enjoyment of a book, you know? So I'm starting to get more invested in the storyline. Something terrible just happened that I was hoping would never happen in this series, but it happened. But I think I'm, I'm not gonna cry. Like I'm not that invested with these characters. And they are, there are so many characters, particularly on like the Grishaverse, like Shadow and Bone side of the storyline. There's just too many people and I still don't know who any of them are. Like, I couldn't picture any of these people, really. And I've watched part of the show. If you guys don't know, I watched, like, the first three episodes of Shadow and Bone, and then I stopped because I thought it was cringe. So I haven't watched any of the rest of it. <laughs> I didn't like it. Yeah, it's fine. I'm going to continue on. And then we finish another series. And it's, like, the best day of my life to finish another series. But I'm kind of, at this point, just reading this so that I can read future Grishaverse books, particularly if they focus on the Six of Crows characters and I know all of the other like kind of context and factors at play that could influence that book. Good morning. I have just woken up. No, I haven't just woken up, but it is the morning. <laughs> but I did tell a bit of a lie there. I've been reading a little bit this morning and I thought I would chat to you whilst I do my skincare. So where, here's the book. Hang on, my fingers are wet now. I <laughs> I am about 450 pages, so I've only got about 130 pages left. Can you see where my bookmark is? There we go. That's how much I've got left. Yeah, I'm 450 pages in, and my just, like, overwhelming feeling is I'm not, like, not enjoying it. Like, I'm enjoying it, but I'm also bored. Do you know what I mean? Because it just feels, like, fine. I feel like we have developed... The plot has got a bit too convoluted. Hang on. I'm running out of this serum. I'm going to have to dig it out. I feel like the plot has got a little bit too convoluted for its own good. We've now got like kind of like four or five different storylines going on and I just feel like it is struggling to keep all of them in check a little bit. Do you know what I mean? I think it just could be a bit more streamlined and I think this is a problem that does happen when an author becomes as successful as Lee Bardugo has. So I'm also, this, if anyone has this eye cream from Glow Recipe, the packaging is stupid because once it was like half empty, like you can't, the pump doesn't get it out because it just hollows out what's in the middle. So I always have to try and like, every day try and get more into the middle and you can't like dig it out because the thing isn't long enough. It's stupid. It's really bad packaging. I like the eye cream, but I'm never repurchasing it because the packaging sucks ass. <laughs> Guys, there's so much product left in there. There's like a quarter of the product left and I can never get any out. Yeah, I think this is a problem that does happen when an author becomes as successful as Lee Bardugo has because publishing just kind of lets authors do their own thing and maybe doesn't edit them as much. I feel like this all could have just been streamlined a bit and made for easier understanding, you know? There's also scenes, right, that like if you know, if you're a fan of the books, you're gonna enjoy it. There's stuff happening now with kind of like characters reappearing. That's been happening throughout the book. Like we get a scene or two with like some favorite characters who are now currently out of the story, but then popping up and appearing. And like, I get it, but it feels a bit fan service -y. It reminds me of like the Avengers, you know? Like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't watch Marvel films anymore really, but I feel like, you know, you have certain, scenes now in those films in like the marvel films that are just to like please the fans versus actually that being what's good for the plot like i enjoy it but it kind of is like i don't know fan favorites popping up just because the buddy go knows it will make the girlies happy not because it actually makes sense in the plot so that's kind of how i'm feeling now i guess i don't know i'm not not enjoying it but i'm also bored again i fell asleep at like eight o'clock last night because I was bored. <laughs> I didn't want to read anymore. Even though I have to read it in order to like get all the reading done, I have to. I need to read this and another book this weekend. But yeah, Tom was like, you fell asleep at like eight o'clock, like on top of the covers. <laughs> I was just feeling so bored. I was like, you know what? I would just rather roll it over and go to sleep right now. So that's what I did. Girl, the shade, the shade of it all. I'd probably give it a three at the moment and I reckon it is going to be a three. So anyways, I'm going to go finish it and I will... Yeah, check in with you once I'm done. I don't want 
Okay, so I finished it, and I actually finished this yesterday, and I held off on coming up with what my opinions are, because I, I, here's the thing, right, the ending, there's simultaneously things happen at the ending that I liked, that were a little bit gag, that made me laugh, there were moments, I think you saw me laughing in the clip, like, there were moments at the end of this that I enjoyed, so part of me was like, oh, I'm gonna give it a 3.5 and round up to a 4 on Goodreads, but the more I think about it, um, it's a 3. It's the trophy. Because also at the end, some pretty momentous things happen. So like something really big happens and it's re really rushed, right? So something at the end, after the big kind of climax of the book, something happens and you're like, okay, that's pretty momentous, that's pretty rushed. And then at the end, they're deciding to like undo that thing or try to undo that thing. And I'm like, that literally happened 10 pages ago. Why? That's too rushed. <laughs> so I'm gonna end up giving this a three. I, I didn't love it. Do I think that this should be the highest rated series on my TBR? No. <laughs> No, but it is because like if you're reading this you're deep in the Grishaverse. You're a deep Grishaverse girly. Like there's no getting out at this point. So I understand why, like I understand the reasoning behind why it is so highly rated. But I just thought it was convoluted. I, the more I think about it I'm annoyed at some of the like character reappearances because they didn't feel like they were doing those characters and their respective storylines justice. It was more just like, whoa look who's here! gag you know what I mean I didn't think it did them justice I don't think it's bad listen me and Lee have an interesting relationship but also there's just certain characters that are bought into this particularly with like okay shadow and bone characters six of crows characters right this geology does mix them up a bit and especially this book does make them more intertwined and I don't want that because I'm just a six of crows girly I'm not a shadow and bone girly I don't really care about a lot of these characters <laughs> No, that sounds bad, guys, and forgive me for saying it, but that's how I felt. Unpopular opinion, but I don't really, like, I'm not as attached to them, and I, so I don't want the worlds to become super conjoined. I can deal with a bit of crossover, but, like, I want them to be fairly separate, and I'm worried for what certain events in this means for the next Six of Crows that we're probably going to get at some point. It might be years and years to come, but, like, I think the next Grishaverse book is going to be at Six of Crows 3. I'm pretty sure. So, I, I don't know how I feel about how certain things are left off, and certain characters are left off. I'm nervous, and I'm not happy about it. <laughs> it's gonna get a three, but let's tick it off um, of my series spreadsheet. This is always a momentous occasion when I get to do this. It's like everything in my life has led up to this moment. Okay, we gotta scroll down. Where is she? Where is she? All of the ones in bold are the ones where I only have to read one more book. Oh shit, I did the wrong thing. One more book to uh, finish the series. And the ones underlined are the ones I own. So let's fill that with the colour. And then cut that. Go down here to completed series. Listen, I'm not doing too bad, guys. Four series finished this year and one DNF'd. Is that right? Like one that I was planning on continuing DNF. I don't count the ones that I started this year because that doesn't affect our overall number. But I did decide to DNF one series that I had been currently reading. So that's like, we're minus five. And how many have we started? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, at the moment we're only plus one series. That's not bad. That's not bad. I can live with being only plus one series in terms of net change so far this year, the middle of the year. Because I feel like we can undo that. Yes, I am going to start more series. <laughs> this year but being only plus one is a positive and I feel like I could finish a few more series in the next next few days not few days few months <laughs> yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video and me reading the highest rated finishing the highest rated series on my TBR listen it's another series ticked off and we must be grateful we must be grateful for that so I hope you guys enjoyed it let me know what you think of Rule of Wolves and the whole Grishaverse world if you have read them I'm sure many of you have if you got into the end comment a wolf emoji because it was Rule of Wolves you know Rule of Wolves. So comment the wolf emoji down below if you got to the end. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!